Okay, so here's the stuff that I got for the dedication that I'm going to do on the altar for the Evaldi school children and teachers who passed away in the mass shooting. I so wish I could go to Texas personally and show my love and support and visit their memorial. But I'm in California, way far from Texas. And right now I'm going through a health condition that barely allows me to walk in the house. So I wanted a way to show my love and support and my dedication in honoring their memory um, from here, from California. So this is what I came up with. As you all know, if you've been watching my channel, I have a special altar for my parents, my husband's parents, and a few people that were really, really, really special in our lives who were there with us and for us from the beginning to the end. Um, and that's what we have the altar for. We did it decorate it for every special occasion, every holiday, and every just because day in between. Um, and a few months ago, um, I started what is called my special guest. And one of the first people I put on there was Gabby Petito. I never met Gabby Petito, but I connected with her in so many ways, one being um, domestic violence, um, situation going on, Another being mental health. Um, and I just, she just tugged and tugged on my heart. So I put her photo on the altar and I did a dedication for her. I bought a few things in her honor and her memory. And now the Valdi School Children and Teacher will be another special guest of mine on the altar. Um, I, I will permanently have something for them on the altar and decorate it every chance I get um, to keep their, you know, their memory alive and my love and support for them. And so this is my humble way of honoring them. And so I wanted to show you what I chose and why I chose it. So one of the things that I chose, and I had my daughter get these things for me because like I said, I could barely walk in the home, um, were these tulips from Amazon. Actually, this one I ordered it myself through Amazon. Um, I usually get the other type of very opened up type of flower um, but I wanted it to be a little bit more real um, and a little bit different for these children so I opted for these tulips um, right here and I chose the color burgundy slash maroon because I believe it was one of the parents that said that's the color that they had chose um, to represent Ivaldi and Ivaldi Strong. And so I thought, okay, I'm going to pick that color as well since that's the color that they chose. And a lot of them, you'll notice they'll wear their T-shirts and it says Ivaldi Strong and it's burgundy slash maroon. Um, she called it maroon. Maroon and burgundy is pretty much the same. And every time I typed in maroon, it came up burgundy as well. So that's what I opted to get that color for was because that's the color that they had chosen so I believe there's 20 or 25 tulips in here and what I'm going to do is I'm going to make two bouquets um, which I do for my parents and my husband's parents and our loved ones that are on the altar I have two vases one on each side and we decorate both for whatever occasion and holiday it is um, and so I'm going to do the same for the Valdi school children and teachers um, so I'm going to probably put half in one vase and half in another and stuff like that and see how it all comes out. Cause this is the first time I'm doing tulips instead of the regular bulb flowers, but I thought that they were so pretty and they looked, um, so real to me. So, but I want them to last. So I don't want to get real flowers because I want them to last and all the flowers and the bouquets that I put on the altar is always artificial flowers because I like them to last, um, and so another thing that I got were these lollipops. These are called mini carnival pops. Um, we got these at Dollar Tree. Um, I thought of ordering them on Amazon as well, but the ones that they had on Amazon were really huge. Um, my altar is not really big. I'm in the process of trying to design an altar that's bigger where I can um, place a lot more stuff and even have a place um, to store the stuff as I'm rotating them depending on the holiday and the occasion. Um, but right now, what I have is an antique desk 
that I created as the all chair. So it doesn't have a ton of space. So the ones that were on Amazon were too huge. And then plus these were children. So I wanted them to be small lollipops, but not too tiny as well. So we found the perfect size. Um, it had Each bag has a seven count. So I wanted to make sure they were a total of at least um, 20 and up. I know it's 19 children and two teachers. So I wanted the lollipops to represent the children. And so um, I'll do 19 of these. And I'm going to place them in a pail with a foam inside of it. And then I'm going to stick it inside the foam. But I thought these were perfect to represent children and to represent them because they were also colorful. They each had so many goals in mind and things that they wanted to be when they grew up. Some were really into art. Some, one of them wanted to be a marine biologist. Um, some were into dancing and TikTok and you name it, they were into it. So I thought a colorful um, lollipop would be perfect for them. So like I said, I'm gonna do 19 lollipops. And for the teachers, I'm gonna do butterflies. Um, so I know there's more than 19 here and that's okay because, um, I could use the rest, um, for other holidays and occasions as well. Um, my mother really, really loves candy. So I always put candy for her when I'm doing Mother's Day for her or her death anniversary or her birthday. I always put candy on the altar. So I always put a couple of lollipops for her, but you know, the main idea was for the Valdi school children. So i rather have more than not enough. And so, like I said, each package comes with seven count. And I got these at Dollar Tree. For, well, now they're dollar twenty-five, But, you know, I would have paid any amount of money as long as I just got the perfect lollipop for, for these kids and to honor them and stuff. So this is what I came up with. So then... I'm going to put those in these pails right here. So I got two pails because I'm going to have two bouquets. I also wanted to have two pails um, to make sure that I can stick as many lollipops as I can. 19 is an odd number. So there's probably going to be um, nine in one and 10 in the other to make the total of 19. So what I'm going to stick in here is this foam. I had my daughter get this foam. It comes in eight pieces it comes in a whole you see the whole block here but it actually divides you can see the line there where it divides so i'm going to put however many fit in here where and sometimes we can carve it too to make it rounded to fit the pail perfect so however many i have to put in each pail i'll put in each pail and this is where i'll be sticking the lollipops in so i got that for the pails and i chose white because they didn't have maroon slash burgundy pails they didn't even have purple i thought of purple too because i noticed a lot of the um little girls at least one and i think there's one more really loved purple but you know i thought no because there's boys in there too and their favorite colors was other colors so i thought if i can't find a maroon slash burgundy I would want a colorful one, kind of like the lollipop colors, but they didn't have that either. So when my daughter was showing me on video the, the colors of the pills that they did have, um, the white one is the perfect one to go for all the children, boys and girls. And so I thought, you know, we could always decorate or paint the outside of them. Either I'm thinking of putting all their names all around the pails. I don't know if I want to do that in a Sharpie or if um, my daughter's really, really artistic. So I'm sure she creates something beautiful and come up with something to represent the children on the outside of the pail too, so that they're not just a plain white. But I thought white was more fitting. So yep, I got two pails, one for each side, and it'll be right, probably right in front or right to the side of the bouquets of the tulips. So then she also got me these um, butterflies. This is also from Dollar Tree. The pail is also from Dollar Tree, if I didn't say that. Um, but it doesn't matter. You could get it wherever. I was going to order everything from Amazon, and I didn't care how much it cost. I just really wanted to make it really, really, really special. And so um, I happened to not find everything on Amazon that I really, really wanted. So this is the only thing that came from Amazon. The rest came from Dollar Tree. And I knew my daughter could get it there because she works there, so it worked out perfect. So she got me these butterflies. Two of them will represent the two teachers um, that passed away in the mass shooting, Irma Garcia and um, 
the other Mrs. Vallis that passed away in the mass shooting. So I wanted smaller butterflies since I'm doing small um, lollipops because I'm also going to put these on a stick with glue, probably a glue gun or some crazy glue or easy or what's that called E6000 um, to stick on a stick and also stick it in the foam in the pail. So the butterflies will also be in the pail, but it'll be um, one butterfly in each pail since it's two teachers. Um, but she couldn't find smaller ones, so this is what she got. So I'm going to see how this works. I'm sure it'll be perfect. Um, and it's kind of four different designs, four different colors. So I'm thinking of doing this purple one for one of the teachers and probably this one since it's another kind of more colorful, feminine, beautiful one. Um, and then I'll see what I can do with these other two. So, and then I have a labeler right here. I actually have two of these. Um, I bought one a long time ago and um, I couldn't find it for some reason. So I had to buy another one. So, and then I ended up finding it. So now I have two of them and it works so good for so many things. Um, especially like when we do our autism event and we do the gift baskets, we can put um, what type of gift basket it is. And, um, you know, what there was two years that we did some donations from family and friends. And so we wanted to put their names so that they knew who donate who donated it. Or if I even, you know, did it, I would put me and my family's name because we um, pay for the entire event. It's an event that I created and founded. Um, so that's kind of when I bought the la labeler and it's just helped for so many other things. Um, so what I'm going to do is on each lollipop, I'm going to put the name of each child that passed away um, on the lollipop. They're not tiny, but they are small, so I'm probably not going to be able to fit their entire name on it. So maybe I'm going to put their first name with their last name in an, with an initial, um, or their first name on the front, last name on the back. Um, I'll see how I'll do it, but I want one of their names to be completely spelled out, um, and it's most likely the first name. Um, and then it'll have, like I said, their um, last name in an initial, or I can put their last name on the other side of the lollipop. I'll see what looks better, um, but I want their names to be on these lollipops. So um, just kind of like they have their memorial nubardi with all the hearts and the poster boards and stuff where they have their pictures and then they have their names on crosses and stuff like that. I think that's so beautiful to show you know, these children, who they were, see their faces and see their names and not just a plain cross. Um, so it's definitely something I like to do and I saw that they did it. So, you know, I'm going to continue that. And so I'll let you see um, what we come up with or what we decided to do as far as the name. Um, I'm thinking of doing the names on the pails as well. So whatever lollipop and whatever names on the lollipop and whatever pail it goes into, we're going to put their names on that pail, or maybe we'll just put all their names on both pails, even if some of the lollipops with some of the names will be in one and some of the other. So we'll, we'll figure that out as well, but I'm going to try to get a maroon slash burgundy um, Sharpie. I've never seen one, but hopefully they'll have it and um, I can use it for this. That way it's permanent and it doesn't smear and stuff like that. So that's what I'm thinking of doing for now. If I add anything to the dedication, I will definitely let you know. And I'm going to show you the whole process of what creation my daughter comes up with as far as name um, on the pails and what we decide to do as far as names on the lollipops and how we decorate it. We'll do a time lapse so you can actually see us um, taking down the altar, what it is now. I think the last time we decorated it was for Mother's Day. So we decorate, we make sure it's decorated every day, but sometimes um, some of the decorations will last from the last holiday till we get to the next holiday or the next occasion. So um, we're going to take what we have down now on it, and I'll probably put a picture of what it looks like now. And then every time we redecorate it, we wipe and disinfect the counter. We give it a fresh bath is what I want to call it. And um, yeah, so we redecorate it depending on who we're honoring. Um, 
if, whose birthday it is, what holiday it is, um, or what occasion in this in this um, moment or in this um, occasion, I should say. I'm trying to look for the right word. Um, it'll be for the body school children and. All of our loved ones that we have on there, like I said, are very um, special people who've been there in our life from beginning to end and who were really special to us. They will still be there with the Evaldi School children, and they will still be honored in between as well. So, because um, like I said, we decorate it for every holiday. So I'm going to make sure that um, even if the next holiday or occasion comes up that I'm celebrating uh, a loved one, and even if I take the tulips down um and i put colors for whatever that holiday is or that occasion is that something will still stay on there for the Valdi school children um and you know it'll be a per they'll have a permanent spot on the altar as well so it'll either be the pail with the lollipops or i'll keep one tulip in 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 the bouquets that i do uh, depending on who we're honoring or what occasion it is, I'll still keep a tulip or so on there. Definitely the pail with the children will stay on there permanently. And I have butterflies on there permanently, so the teacher's butterfly will stay there as well. So they will have a permanent spot on there. But of course, the rest of the altar will decorate, will continue to decorate um, for our loved ones. And then we rotate it and stuff like that. But they will have something that will be their permanent spot on there. So I just wanted to show you what I got. I just went in a whole 16 minute spill of that. But um, yeah, so I just wanted you to see. And if this is something you wanna do and you're like me, you can't get to taxes, but you wanna do something from you to honor them and do a dedication to them. If you have an altar like me, then you can totally take my idea and implement it, or you can take my idea and implement some of yours, or you could completely do your own and put it on the altar. Or if you don't have an altar and you want to start, you know, to, you know, honoring loved ones or just exclusively doing it for the Valdi children for now, you, you know, you could just do like a table, like a fold out table or, you know, some spot in your home that you're not using that you can put just maybe some fresh flowers or artificial flowers or you can light up a candle for them you know some it doesn't have to be something big it could be something small just to honor them so if you're interested in doing that maybe this will give you ideas on what to do and then you could come up with your own creation as well if you want to um so that's fine um what else was i gonna say um, that's another thing that I'm going to put for them is a candle. I'm going to try to find a maroon candle if I can. Um, I'll see what I can come up with, what I want the candle to also be just as special for them as well. So, okay, so I'm going to pull this all together. I'm going to do a time lapse showing you how we, um, put the, the names on the lollipops, how we put the foam in the pails and how we do the sticks and stuff, um, the whole process. So I'm probably gonna do a time lapse of the whole process, each little thing we do and how we put it all together and then how we actually um, put it on the altar and our finishing um, look to honor these children and these teachers. My heart goes out to Evaldi, I don't wanna cry. My heart goes out to the family and friends of these children, and I just pray that God gives them strength, peace through this extremely sad and difficult time. And I hope that they know that the love and support is around the world. For those of us who can't get there or want to continue to show our love and support, um, they they have it from everyone around the world. And so California loves you and um you would truly be in my thoughts and prayers. I know that's become like a cliche. I should turn this camera around. So anyway, um, I know that's become like something that people are so tired of hearing. I mean, thoughts and prayers is truly a good thing and it does help, but when it's true and a lot, a lot of people say it so easy and they don't think that you really should 
that's a commitment that you're making and you should follow through. If someone's in your thoughts and prayers, they should be in your thoughts, not just in that moment, but whenever you can think of them, you should think of them. And especially with prayers, you should go back home or wherever you are, or even right there and put them in your prayers. So if you tell somebody, you're my thoughts and prayers, follow up on that commitment, not just let it be a statement or a saying because people are so used to saying that and they really don't think much about it or they really don't go back and pray and it's really sad. And one of the parents was even saying, I have been saying this for a while, you know. It's hard for me to even say it because I don't want people to think, yeah, you're just saying that, but do you really go back and pray? I really pray. I'm a total spiritual person. I'm into my faith and I'm I pray every night and sometimes in between throughout the day and I read my devotionals and my Bible. I'm just a really big spiritual person. So when I say you're in my thoughts and prayers, that's exactly what I mean from the bottom of my heart. You will be in my thoughts and you definitely will be in my prayers. So Ivaldi, stay strong. You are truly, truly in my thoughts and prayers and even beyond by, um, honoring you on this dedication and I hope um that you can feel our love and support here from California. So yeah. So okay, so I'm not gonna take much longer. It's already 18 minutes on this video. So the rest of it will be showing you um what we do to each thing and how we put it all together and the um final look on the altar. So stay tuned. So just wanted to show you real quick how the altar looks that we have here at the house to honor our parents and special, special loved ones. Um, before we take it down and do the dedication for the Ivaldi um, shooting victims, all the 19 children and two teachers. Um, so I just wanted to show you what it looked like before. The last day we decorated, or the last time we decorated was for Mother's Day. So you see where it says Happy Mother's Day, Happy Mother's Day on this balloon. We did the color purple. Um, my mother's favorite color was pink, but she also loved purple as well. And I wanted kind of a different color that would represent my mother and my mother-in-law. So we thought, okay, we always do pink for my mother. Let's do a purple to represent both of them. Of course, we have a few butterflies um, to remember our loved ones who we believe are still angels um, for us and are always right there with us. And then, of course, we have a couple of crosses. This one was over here. We have candy. I told you I always put candy because my mom loved candy. And who doesn't love candy? So I do it for the moms. Um, I don't think my mother-in-law was a big old candy fanatic, but she ate candy. So we do two glasses, one for each of them. This one says best mom uh, ever, and this one says mom. And we kind of try to match the candy to the flowers. <laughs> so in this case, we found some purple uh, mini Snickers. So you can see that there. And there, sometimes we put lollipops, sometimes we put, just depend on the holiday and what candy we have out there. Easter is usually colorful candy. And of course we have two crosses. One says grace and one is just a general one. This was actually made from Jerusalem and they were brought to our church, you know, to sell. They had so many different art stuff, you know, spiritual faith, art stuff, um, the Ten Commandment plaques, crosses, bracelets, you name it. And so my... We got this one for my daughter, and um, she really loved this one, so we got this one for her. And then, of course, this is my mom. This is a thing that we just took to the grave. We let it sit on there for a while to for her to enjoy it. But we wanted to bring it home because it was so beautiful, and just we didn't want it to be broken when the landscaper would go by, and they already warn you that your stuff might not be there when you come back, and a lot of stuff will be broken because he can't step off of the... Thing that they ride and start protecting and moving things around so they already warn you so i didn't want this i thought it was too precious and too beautiful to be broken so we let it sit there with my mom for a while and then we brought it back with us and of course it has her picture in there and it says in loving memory and then we have another little pail to match the purple with flowers with some purple reese's <laughs> And then this is my daughter's baby who she just lost. She just had a miscarriage. So this was her um, sonogram picture of the baby. And then this is me and my dad. Thankfully, me and my daughter, which is now 32 years old, is not dead. But this is one good picture that I have of me and my dad. And so I actually have taken it off of here because it was just for our 
um, loved ones that have gone on to heaven. So I didn't want me and my daughter to be there. And I took it off and had it in my room on my nightstand to have my dad close to me. And my granddaughter got a hold of it. And for some odd reason, you know, she just kept bringing it over here and wanting to put it on the altar. So I'm going to go ahead and take that down again. But the photos of our loved ones are right here in this frame. I used to have each individual frames for each one of our loved ones. But it took up a lot of space, as you can see. What we use for the altar is an antique desk, which is beautiful. It reminds me of the Love Letter movie. Um, and we have two shelves for stuff that we rotate. We store and rotate depending on the holiday and the special occasion or what we're trying to honor them for. Um, different candles, different decorations, different flowers, just all kinds of different things. Um, prayer hands, crosses, you name it. So, sorry, I have to sit down. I can't stand without the walker and I came over here real quick without my walker. Um, but even as you can see there, we have a whole lot more stuff that's not there. And so we need storage space. So I'm in the process of creating slash designing a new altar, which would look really beautiful, but would allow me not only to display a lot more precious stuff in their honor and their memory, but to also store stuff as we're rotating between the holidays and the special occasions and just whatever causes or whatever way we're trying to honor them. This obviously is not enough space. We also put some stuff in the drawers, but mainly like a knife or scissors to cut whatever we need to cut is more like supplies, um, stickers, um, scotch tape, pins if we need to write something so it's more supplies little mini light up battery candles stuff like that are in the there's a drawer right there and a drawer right here um so it's just definitely not enough space but it's beautiful and it's meant a lot to us but we will be designing a whole new altar um so we used to put each individual picture of our loved one up on here where you see the cross and the pail and stuff like that but it just took up a lot of space and like i said the altar is for the loved ones that have been there all our life, from beginning to end, top to bottom, have been there for us from day one to the day they left and we believe they're still with us, or have had a huge, special, special connection. It's not for every family member, even though, you know, we miss them and we're, you know, they're always in our thoughts somewhere, you know, and of course, we always want them to rest in peace. And, you know, we remember them fondly with photos or videos and stuff like that are just the memories we have in our heart and our head. Um, but we don't want to put just anybody just because they were our aunt or they were our uncle or they were a cousin or, you know, it just have to be, like I said, very, very special loved ones, which primarily is our parents. So as you see here, these are my parents right here. And I love this picture because it's the one picture that my dad is smiling. My dad always had a serious look. And my family loves this picture, you can't see with the, with the flash, that he's smiling and they looked in love. At that time, my parents did divorce way before they passed away. Um, that's my husband's parents. And then our dog Malia that had died. And then a dear, dear friend that was our friend for years and years and years. We had such a special connection. She was actually family to us and she was my daughter's godmother. And I named my youngest daughter, which that's not her goddaughter, but I named my youngest daughter after her. And then my one and only special, special cousin who I had an amazing relationship from beginning to end, who was always there for me. I loved him so much. And then our first special guest that I was telling you about, Gabby Petito, who she just tugged and tugged on my heart when she had passed away and the whole thing that she was unfortunately murdered and stuff like that. And just, I connected with her in so many ways and then she tugged on my heart. So she became our special guest. I have a picture of her. So yeah, then these are two cousins of mine who were special in my life as well. Um, we have them up there. So that's why I try to get this type of um, collage type of frame so that I can fit their photos perfectly without taking a lot of space here. And I can leave this space for the bouquets, for the flowers, for the balloons, for any mementos, crosses, um, candy, cards, you name it. I can leave that space for that. We always have two bouquets, one on each side. We try to have two candy jars or sometimes it's two pails because this is about a mom. So this is primarily for their birthday or their death anniversary of the moms or just Mother's Day. So that's the three times that we use these candy, these jars because it says mom and best mom ever. Other than that, we'll use pails like this for any other holiday and occasion. 
And of course, now we have this big thing here and then we leave space for crosses like these. These rotate as well. And then we have a Mother's Day card for the grandmas as well. And like I said, we always use artificial flowers because not only are they more beautiful, but they last forever. And then we'll put like um, spin wheels here and then we'll add another balloon. It says, love you, mom. So this was the last day that we decorated the altar. So now we're going to take everything down. And once we take everything, everything down, that's our opportunity to clean it, disinfect it, give it a good wipe and a good shine. And then we put our next um, holiday or occasion or um, cause or dedication, which in this case will be the Huvaldi children and teachers who passed away. So I just wanted to give you a before look of what our altar is about. If you haven't seen my channel, um, what we have on there and what it looks like. And then I'm going to do a time lapse of us actually putting everything together and then actually decorating the altar. So you will get a time lapse of that. And then I will show you the after look once we did that honor dedication to them. Um, may they rest in peace. God bless them. And yeah, so I'll let you see what happens. <laughs> 